Well, first of all, they had to put a pole in the flag to hold it outwards. So there's the vertical pole where they sink it into the ground, and then there was a horizontal one holding it upright. So some people think that flag is blowing in the wind, and that's the reason it stuck outwards. No, it was just a pole they put in it to hold it. That nylon flag might have been charged different than the Teflon in the suit, and maybe the two attracted, and that got it moving. Or when the astronaut stepped by, a vibration in the ground moved the pole a little and set the flag waving. The lunar module did not sink as deeply into the moon as they thought it would. It's one of the reasons Neil Armstrong and Buzz had to practice going off the ladder and back up because it was a much bigger step than they expected. So it turned out the lunar surface was not as disturbed as we thought it should be. So in those photographs, you don't notice a big pit. However, if you look carefully, it's completely disturbed around it. It's clear that a rocket engine did blow material out from there. That has to do with dynamic range. So if you go all the way to the moon, you can either expose a very long time and you'll see stars, but the surface of the moon and if the Earth is in the picture, they will lose all detail. They'll be what's called overexposed. Or you can expose the right amount for the moon and the Earth, and then the stars are too faint to see. It's, an, it's a matter of contrast. It's called perspective. They kind of figured that out in the Renaissance, the fact that you have a vanishing point on a road. Well, those lines of the road are parallel, you know, when you're driving down the road. Why does it look like they converge off to a point in the center? Shadows have a similar effect. We see shadows going different directions on the moon surface is an indication that, well, it's the world we live in. It's simply perspective added to the surface not being completely smooth. The idea that shadows should all be parallel is false. It's I was strolling on the moon one day in a merry, merry month of December. Now, May. May. May is the month. May, that's right. May is the year of the month. Speed of light is 186,000 miles per second, and it's 240,000 miles away. So it's less than two seconds of delay time. So the delay time is not long. And in fact, if you're a careful observer, you do notice that the astronauts took longer and longer to reply to questions from mission control as they got closer and closer to the moon. Now in terms of the size of the transmitter, sure, you need a giant transmitter if you're using a tiny, tiny receiver. We were not using tiny receivers, we were using giant radio dishes. The hardware still does exist today. Some folks say, well, they destroyed it. They did not destroy it. That's false. You can go to air and space museums throughout the United States and see capsules that came back from the moon and landed. The Apollo project was more than, or right around 400,000 people worked on it. 100,000 or so of those worked here in Southern California. Friends, family, people that live here, they, they have relatives that worked on this program and they went to work every day working on hardware that they were expecting to go to the moon and it was designed to do so. And none of these people have stepped forward and said, you know, that thing I built wouldn't have worked. It wouldn't have gotten us there. It's just harder to fake than to go to the moon and actually walk on it. Uh, it's an incredibly difficult thing to do, but it's even more difficult to fake it.